Hello, welcome. Welcome to the Geese Online Masters in Accounting IMSA webinar. Um, I'm going to give you all a few minutes to just get logged in from where you're located. And we will get started here in a short bit. Thank you all for, for logging in. And as you are logging in, um, there is a barcode on the screen. And if you can scan this code to connect with our team, if you have questions or what have you, you can just put your phone up to the barcode and um, we get your, your questions um, answered. So um, just welcome. And we're gonna just wait just for just a few more seconds um, before we get started. We wanna make sure everyone is able to get logged in. All right, well, welcome. Welcome to the Geese Online Masters and a County IMSA webinar. My name is Marcus Phillips. I'm one of the Associate Directors for Geese Graduate Programs. I will be your presenter today. Um, it's going to be about a 45, 50 minute uh, webinar. Um, and so I'm going to kind of go through the agenda here shortly. And, but like I said, um, if you can scan the code on the screen to connect with our team um, in regards to your questions. But before we get started, I want to just kind of get an idea where people are chiming in from. And so if you can join by the web at poev.com backslash geese online or in the upper corner, you can actually um, scan the barcode. And so that will allow us to see um, where you are chiming in from. And so we love to just get an idea um, of where, where folks are coming in from or chiming in from. We have over 150 uh, countries represented um, in our online program. So this, so it is a global community. Um, I'm actually based in Normal, Illinois, which is about 45 minutes uh, northwest of Champaign-Urbana, where our campus is located. So I'm in the heart of the Midwest, uh, surrounded by a lot of corn. And so, uh, yeah, Normal, Illinois, headquarters of State Farm Insurance Company. And so it looks like we have folks coming in from, from the U.S., primarily the Northeast, Midwest. I think I see a, a someone from the southeastern part of the U.S. Um, I look like we have someone from over by near Japan um, that is chiming in. So, um, so great. So thank you all for, for your responses. And like I said, just love to see people from all over um, the world. So the agenda for today, um, there's some welcome introductions. And then we will move on to the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. I'll touch on a little bit about the Geese College of Business. Um, and then we'll go through pretty much the Geese Business Online. Um, and then we'll touch on the IMSA, kind of do like a program overview, touch a little bit on the curriculum and content, and then towards the end, the application tips and tricks um, that I want to share with you. And then we, if we have time, um, we'd be happy to answer questions uh, during the Q&A session. And again, it's a lot to cover uh, within like this 45, 50 minute um, window. And again, my name is Marcus Phillips, Associate Director of Business Development uh, for Geese Graduate Programs. And so I've been with Geese for about a year and a half. Uh, and my job is to develop relationships um, with corporation, enterprises, nonprofits, um, to make sure that we you know, have a pipeline of learners coming from various um, organizations um, or companies. I am so happy um, to have Jesse Wong joining us. Uh, so Jesse, if you wanna introduce yourself, let folks know where you're chiming in from, uh, how far along you are in the program or what have you. So we're gonna turn it over to you. Thanks, Marcus. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for having me today. My name is Jesse Wong. And I am currently in the final semester of the IMSA program. Uh, I reside in New York and have over 18 years of working experience, primarily focusing on the nonprofit. Um, so throughout my career, I have been uh, involved in various nonprofit sectors, including the museums, healthcare, and my current role in a community development financial institutions. Um, because of my undergrad study was in Australia, uh, which was not major in accounting, I always have a strong desire uh, to pursue a accounting master degree in the US. So that's the main reason why I'm here. <laughs> at Geese. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I will be talking a little bit about the programs, 
and processes. Uh, Jessie's going to kind of share her experience uh, throughout the IMSA program. Uh, so it's good to hear that you're, you know, your final semester. So I'm sure you have a lot to share. Um, but I also don't want to forget my colleague, Lori, who's actually online as well. And so I'm thankful that Lori is here to offer support. So if you do have questions, uh, try to have those questions, uh, try to put those questions in the Q&A um, as opposed to the chat. And then Lori can be able to answer those questions or some questions we need to answer live. Um, we can do that um, as well. And so the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, I mean, there are various reasons why um, you would want to choose our institution. Um, it's definitely one of the premier state institutions, uh, you know, recognized nationally, um, internationally. So it has a strong reputation, um, you know, not only amongst um, our peer institutions, um, but folks in different nonprofit organizations and corporations as well. You know, our mission is a land-grant institution, and so um, a part of that is we want to make sure that, you know, this high-quality education is accessible uh, to as many people as possible. And so, you know, we'll touch a little bit on our price point, um, you know, a little bit later in the presentation. Um, I think that's one of the driving factors. And so I, I love the fact that I'm working for an institution um, that isn't, you know, exclusive in terms of you know, the financial piece or what have you. And so we have had wonderful folks come through our programs who may have otherwise not been able to earn a, a graduate degree in accounting. And so, so we're very proud of that. And as you can see, there's some notable rankings um, as well. So it's a, a very, very reputable um, institution. A big piece that I kind of touch on as well at the bottom is there's a 500,000 plus alumni with the university. Um, and so, so there's a big, big support system that is out there. Now, the Geese College of Business um, also has a strong reputation as a, a, a college of business. And so, as you can see, some of the accolades, one thing that I, I, I feel like is, it sets us apart from a lot of other institutions is our quality of faculty. Uh, we have some outstanding faculty members and particular IMSA program. Um, and so, we're, we're now faculty um, who stay relevant um, they're always, you know, being quoted in some type of business publication or website or what have you, um, you know, just on, on current issues uh, revolving around accounting. Um, our dean, as, as pictured in this, in this screen, Dean Brown, um, he is a, a, a definitely an innovative dean. We've been very fortunate um, to have a dean like Dean Brown who really wanted to put money towards innovation as opposed to appeasing like the rankings or what have you. And so uh, Poets and Quants, which is the premier business website, um, you know, named our dean, our most innovative dean of the decade. Our MBA program was one of the top programs in 2022. Um, so, so it's a very strong reputation um, in our business school. And again, we have 79,000 plus Geese alumni um, as well. Um, so, so there's that strong support. Um, Jess, Jesse, was it, what what were some of the factors that made you choose um, the IMSA program other maybe other programs you looked at? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually have two family members who are the alumni. <laughs> so awesome. I already heard a lot of good stuff, a lot of good reputation about our school. And what initially got me interested in checking the IMSA program was because I uh, took some class from the Coursera. And I absolutely love the feeling of continuous learning and also attracted to those videos about introducing the GIS <laughs> program, the campus, everything. So at the time I felt like, wow, that was the perfect moment for me to go back to school. And also that time was three years ago. So it was during the pandemic. So I have a lot of free time um, uh, since I don't need to go back to the office. I saved this time for commute and plus the tuition fee that Marcus mentioned, uh, super competitive uh, compared to other university. And, and yeah, when I compare the tuition fee to what I will pay in New York, they are almost the same or a little bit cheaper. So I think the, the geese is really the best fit for me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yep. Um, and so 
we want to kind of ask another question. Um, so what has been, I guess, holding you back if you haven't pursued a graduate degree? Some folks may already have a grad degree and just pursuing a second one, but what has been holding you back? Um, so you can join by the web again, or you can do the code. And so just want to kind of get an idea of, of what is holding you back from, from pursuing your graduate education. Cost, I was, I was, cost was always up there. So not surprised by that. Return on investment, which is great. We'll, we'll, touch, on, we'll touch on all these, to be honest. Uh, but you want to kind of get an idea of other. Okay. Love to know what other will be. So yeah, cost typically is the, probably the, the top factor when it comes to um, graduate education. And so, um, so yeah, we'll touch on that. So let's talk about Geese Business Online Program. So, so there's three pillars, um, I say, about our, our online programs. Number one is the flexibility. And so Jesse mentioned the flexibility of our programs. Um, so I think some questions you may want to ask, because a lot of times programs will throw the word flex flexible out there, flexibility out there. Um, but you want to make sure that our program is 100% online. So it's not a hybrid program. You're not required to um, come to campus with our program. There are some programs that require uh, residency. You come to campus multiple times a year. We don't require that. Um, so that adds his flexibility there. There's flexibility, and we do have live sessions on a weekly basis. Uh, however, attending those live sessions is optional. Um, some programs require you to attend those sessions. Again, this is our flexibility. We understand our programs are work, are geared towards our working adults, right? We understand you have other obligations. You may have a family, and things come up, life come up, right? And so we try to be as flexible as possible. Um, I touched a little bit about stackability as well. Um, and so with the IMSA program, once you complete the program, you can stack 24 credit hours into the IMBA program. Um, so you're about a third complete with the IMBA program once you complete the IMSA program. Uh, and then online by design. And so, you know, we started in 2016 with our IMBA program, and uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a high quality online program. We invested millions of dollars in our infrastructure and our technology and staff. We have over 200 uh, staff members, like faculty and staff, that are behind the scenes with our online um, programs. So I'm teaching and learning folks with online design to tech support to advising. Um, there's there's a whole team. And so we did this prior to the pandemic. And so we were not one of those schools that just kind of threw together an online program. It was already in existence with an IMBA. And so the platform, the groundwork was already set, the framework was set uh, for our IMSA and IMSM program. Uh, so I think those are three strong pillars, uh, definitely, of our program. The stackable bill, just quickly, I want to touch on this. Um, like I mentioned before, um, so we have some students, so we try to meet students, uh, you know, where they are in their educational journey. And so some students may not feel comfortable with starting a full-fledged degree program, uh, which is totally fine. Some students may want to start off in a graduate certificate, and we have 13 graduate certificates that are 100% online as well. Some folks may want to start off in just taking an Illinois for a credit course to see how things go as a non-degree student, or some may start off in Coursera. I think like Jesse kind of mentioned, you may take a massive um, open online course through Coursera as a non-credit just to kind of get your feet wet a little bit, um, if, especially if you've been out of school for a while. And so we have, you know, pathways where we can stack into uh, from a MOOC to a four credit to a grad certificate to an online um, degree program. One thing I do want to mention, the stackability from IMSA to the IMBA. Um, the IMBA requires three years of professional work experience. And so that's something to keep in mind when you're looking to, to stack after you complete your IMSA. Um, degree. And again, that saves you time and it saves you money as well. And so that's something to consider when you're looking at um, various programs as well. And so just want to just briefly uh, just show you the different graduate certificates that we do have, have available. And again, these are transcripted uh, credit, meaning that whatever grad certificate you, you go through, one of our 13 grad certificates, those are credit, right? And so if you decide to like to stack into a degree program or take it somewhere else, you will earn credit um, for those for those certificates. Very brief application process. 
Um, and you're, you know, there's a range of courses um, you can take as well. There's some quick facts about the IMSA. Um, so the, the cost can range from 20, a little bit over 20,000 to a little bit over 27,000. That's include tuition and fees. Um, it takes 18 months to complete. You can have up to five years to complete the program. So it kind of fits you know, like your schedule and your needs. Again, you know, that flexible, you know, environment. And so, um, you know, sometimes life may happen <laughs> where you may have to stop one, eight weeks to you had a very, very um, strong you know, job obligation, you know, where a certain period of time throughout the year, you may not be able to, to take a course or what have you. Um, and again, so you had a max of five years. And then there's three start start dates um, as well. And so, again, we try to, you know, meet, you know, meet the needs of our students so we can have multiple times of the year you can actually start um, the program. And then just kind of some numbers I wanted to share as well, the average age. Um, so as you can see, we have a season, we have season workers in our program, which we really like. Um, and, and it's a range, right? You may have a, a student that's 23 years old uh, to 72 years old, right? Um, but there's a range of folks, uh, like I said, from 43 different states, 35 different countries within this program. Um, and then 82 from four to 100 companies. But like Jesse, you know, folks represent nonprofits, small businesses. Um, I had a banker uh, from Jamaica who was like, hey, I want to go back and get my accounting degree. And I, you know, I want to go into this field or what have you. And he was a retired banker. And so it's just a range of professionals, um, like I said, from various sectors and various industries. And so just wanted to kind of share that. And so, Jess, um, when you applied, what was your like professional experience like at the time of application? Yeah, so when I applied to the program, I was progressed from the senior accountant to the accounting manager while working in the healthcare sector. So the promotion really made me want to get back to study because I know I need to refine my accounting knowledge. So that's the time. Yeah, it's during the promotion. <laughs> oh, great, great. And we, and we tend to see um, students are, are satisfied with the program and we tend to see students you know, get a promotion while they're while they're in the program. And so as you can see, uh, with these numbers, 95% satisfaction uh, with the program. And kind of what Jesse was mentioning, we we tend to get students who it's kind of like a word of mouth. Um, yes, we do marketing and so forth, um, but surprisingly, not surprisingly, but a word word of mouth is is really strong um within our program. We and we tend to see folks who apply like, oh, I have a coworker who's in the program, a supervisor was in the program or what have you. Um, so that's really good to hear. And as you see, 76% received a job promotion or offer accepted new position while in the program. And then you can see the pay increase um, as well. So let's touch on the IMSA curriculum and content. And so to earn your MSA, you would need to complete 32 credit hours. And so on the left-hand side, uh, so on the core, under the core curriculum is a 20 core uh, that needs that are required, right? And so these are your, your core courses um, for this IMSA uh, degree program. And then you have 12 credit hours of electives. And so these are just a few um, of the elective classes. Um, that, and so there's, there's more electives that you can choose from. And again, we try to uh, make sure you had those foundational courses under your belt, but then allow you the flexibility to kind of tailor the remaining 12 credits, you know, to your needs, right? And so, um, you know, for Jesse, did you have a particular area of interest um, based on your electives that you chose? Uh, I chose the general accounting. And okay. I know some of my classmates, they chose tax or data analytics. Mm -hmm. mm, but me, yeah. it's general accounting. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, that's totally fine. We've been seeing an increase in um, interest in data analytics mm -hmm. uh, within the county field um, as well. And there's a county analytics concentration um, as well within the IMSA curriculum. And so uh, so th that's an option as well. And again, you can have these core courses and then you have the, the electives as well. So it's pretty straightforward, um, you know, with the, with the coursework. 
And so I wanted to kind of touch on the note about the I, and so an IMSA. And so basically, we get a lot of questions about this. So basically, it just refers to the method of delivery only. Um, I degree, it just, you know, refers to all of our master's programs, like IMBA, IMSA, IMSM. Um, it's not noted on your transcript. So, you know, when you graduate, it will not say online, MSA, it will just have a master's of science in accounting. And so um, the diploma will be from the University of Illinois. Our courses are taught by our faculty at the Geese College of Business. We do not contract our faculty out to a third party or what have you. And so the content is a content that was uh, created by, by our Geese faculty um, as well. And so, you know, when we decided to go online, we wanted to make sure faculty, um, you know, wanted to teach online and we're good at it as well, right? And so able to engage the students uh, within the classroom. And so, uh, so yeah, so I just wanted to kind of point it out in terms of the the small eyes. We get that questions a lot. Um, Jesse, how have you applied um, the course content like to your professional work? Yeah, I did. Um, so that's when you show the core curriculum, right? There's one class is auditing and my company have the internal audit team. So that's one time they sent me an email with some terminology <laughs> about audit. And I'm so glad I learned from the class. Uh, so some some wording I and I use them in that allow me to communicate effectively with them and also address their inquiries. So I feel good that I can apply my knowledge in my job. And also about the elective that you just showed, I actually took an elective from the IMBA class, which is a, um, a, a co-ed uh, business analytic uh, communication mm -hmm. with data. So that is a skill that I can apply on making presentation, PowerPoint presentation in my job. Mm -hmm. and that's a really good point that you made. And so um, our programs are, are flexible where allow students to take courses, you know, like, like Jesse mentioned, she's an IMSA student, but she was able to take an IMBA course or she can, you know, could have took an IMSM course or what have you. And so there's some flexibility there, um, you know, through, through cross program courses, coursework or what have you. Um, I touched I touched on online by design, and so just want to just touch talk a little bit about the different components of the classes. And so uh, we have the asynchronous component, and so this is through Coursera, what Jesse mentioned earlier through Coursera, and so this is kind of like the textbook of the class. Um, it's a non-credit; it's more of a completion, and so you know there's contents, videos, self-assessed quizzes, or what have you. And so you have to complete, you know, this component of the class um, to, to be able to complete the class. And then we have the high engagement piece that I mentioned earlier with the live weekly um, sessions or what have you. Um, and so, Jesse, can you kind of touch on like your experience with the asynchronous component and with the high engagement component? Can you talk about those two? Yes. So for the Coursera component, uh, like Marcus said, you have to watch all these videos. Each video, they may have a little quiz that you have to complete. And then each module, they also have a graded quiz that you have to complete. You have to score certain percentage in order to pass that uh, module and then move on to another module. Um, and that is required. We, I need to get that certificate from Coursera in order to complete that course. Um, and then for the highly engagement, which is our live session, um, is very interactive, a lot to learn. Um, I usually try to attend the live session. Um, normally for the core course, we have two live session, one in the morning, one in the evening. Um, during the live session, we may have some pool question to test your knowledge. Uh, we may have breakout room. So you guys, we, we can have a chance to discuss um, certain topic with the group mate. And then if you cannot attend those live session, that's all right. For me, I will uh, watch the recording which is 
upload on the same day. So normally after work, after dinner, I watch those recording. I can play it faster. I can play it backward. I can do the closed cap caption, which helped me a lot, especially some of the course, some of the class that I'm not familiar with. So very good. But <laughs> I learned a lot from those content. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. And and she made a great point that, you know, um, these live sessions, you know, are multiple times, you know, like, for example, I may offer one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Um, so we understand we have students from various time zones. And, you know, so we try to accommodate, you know, that as well. And again, if, if you're unable to attend, there's that recording that's uploaded the same day. Um, and so, so yes. So there, and then there's the high, the high engagement piece at that live session. And like Jesse mentioned, just having those, those working on some group, group projects or what have you. Um, and so, and, and then also we have faculty office hours. Have you been able to take advantage of those office hours, Jesse? I basically attend each one of it. <laughs> okay. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, and there's peer driven discussion and tutoring. Um, so there's a there's some ways that you can connect, you know, with your peers in the program, um, you know, through these classes, through these high engagement um, components or what have you. So. Um, so, yeah. So thank you for for sharing your experience with those courses. Oh, and then quickly, I just want to add, how are the classes? Um, do you feel like some classes are, I want to say, have maybe more um, group work than others, or is it are they all kind of the same? What has been your experience? Yeah, my experience is for the core uh, curriculum, uh, we have weekly assignments that's done on the Canvas platform. We have midterm exam, we have final exam. And since the class are uh, separate into two parts, right? part A and part B, so the midterm and the final exam will be done in part A. And after it's done for the part B, it won't test you back for what you learned from part A. So which is really good for me, especially because I don't, I won't be able to memorize 16 chapters in one time and do the exam. I cannot. So it's really good that it's separate into two parts. Um, it, uh, for the core curriculum, I found it uh, quite like a lot of content, a lot of stuff to learn. For the, ele for the elective, it's easier. <laughs> That's how I feel. Um, and I can pick the one that I interest the most. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, we had a we have a question about the breakout room. So, in your experience, how how large have the breakout rooms been? Like, is your group large, small, medium? Oh, for the breakout rooms, are four or five people. For the group assignments, that's also four to five people. Oh, pretty pretty small. Mm -hmm. Pretty uh, small. That's great. Great question. And so, we talked a little about fact. Just want to show you some pictures of our faculty or what have you. Um, and again, we try to have the latest technology. The, the, top, the top picture in the middle, um, as you can see, there's tech support uh, behind the scenes. And so they're, they're instrumental in making sure that faculty are able to deliver high quality information um, you know, online. And so uh, again, to my point earlier, just making sure that you know, we had that infrastructure in place, we had a support um, team in place for our faculty. And so one, one, one area of our program I feel like uh, stands out is our networking. So I'll talk a little about how you can actually network, you know, within your classes, right? And, you know, through group assignments, group projects, you know, majority of our students are working professionals. And so while you're working together on a group project, you start to get to know each other a little bit and understand, you know, their, you know, their, their profession or what have you. Um, but we really want our students to be part of, a community of learners uh, within our online program. So we don't want you to feel like that you're just out there alone on an island. There are opportunities to get connected, um, obviously inside the classroom, but outside the classroom, right? And so there's a couple opportunities that are led by geese. And so we may have various, what we call iConnect events um, in various cities throughout the U.S. And so we will have maybe an alumni or someone from leadership 
um, you know, we'll host like a dinner um, for students like in a certain city, uh, like DC, for example, um, or New York, for example. And so we had had our dean come and talk to our student, students in New York. We had Narissa Brown, who's an associate dean of graduate programs, um, connect. And then we have these immersion events as well. So uh, we'll, and I'll touch on some of this and then I converge. Uh, and so those are three to three like geese led opportunities. And then we have the student led opportunities um, that are led by our students, right? We have a very <laughs> engaging student body. And again, it's not regulated to the IMSA program. It's for our, all of our online students um, as well. And so um, Jesse, have, have you taken advantage of any of like the geese led or student led opportunities? Yes. Yes, I do. Mainly focus on the student-led opportunity. Um, so I joined a couple chat group in the workplace, which is like a Facebook, but it's for school or work. Um, so we had the cohort uh, for 2021 group. Uh, we have the CPA study group. We have like ambassador group. Um, so we communicate very frequently. And basically every day I receive messages and we keep our connection and we talk about the study, we talk about job, um, many, many great advice there. So it's a really good networking opportunity. And also after my group project is done, I also connect with my group mate on LinkedIn. And that's the best part I got from this program is to expand my link my LinkedIn networking. That's a really good point. I noticed that oh, students that, that I connect with, they want to definitely connect with in LinkedIn. So I don't really have business cards, as many business cards as I used to, um, because LinkedIn is kind of like the new business card. And so we talked a little bit about the networking opportunities. Let's touch on some of these. So for example, we had a Seattle immersion event. And so every year we put on about four or five immersion um, events, whether it's domestically or internationally. And uh, this is the picture of Seattle immersion, I think it was last year. And so they had an opportunity to, to work on some live projects for the NHL expansion team in Seattle. Um, and then got a chance to just immerse themselves in the Seattle culture, obviously with the Starbucks coffee pitcher. Um, but the biggest part was they were able to connect with each other in person, um, work on some live projects for a corporation, and, you know, did some case study competitions um, presenting their findings or what have you. So obviously they was able to apply what they learned in the classroom during this emergent opportunity. Uh, this year, uh, oh my goodness, I think there, there are going to be some immersion events in uh, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, South Africa. I know there were some in the past in Houston um, and some other cities. And so again, it's, it's various various opportunities to connect. These emergent events, there's additional cost to these events as well. It can range from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars, depending on the location and the duration of the, um, the emergent event. And so, um, so yeah, if, 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 you know, I always encourage teams that they're able to partake. Um, definitely, definitely I heard from what I've heard from students is definitely well worth it. Um, and then our one of one of our I feel like our I don't know, centerpiece of networking is our iConverge event. Um Jesse, had you have you attended iConverge? I wish <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> but I saw the pictures that the you know the classmates share with us. Really, like I saw, really fun. They they met with different classmates. They met with the professor, um, and they share their experience with us. So it was really cool. Oh yes, and I was able to attend. So faculty and staff can attend as well. Um, I do want to let you know, Jesse, that alumni are able to attend, and so we have several alumni who who may for some reason they are unable to attend while they're in the program, but they are always welcome back. And as you can see, we have over 500 uh, students and alumni attend in 2023. It is a great professional development um, event. And so for three days, there were various workshops. And I know last year, the theme was, was revolving around careers. And so we had several speakers come in and just talk about uh, professional development, 
Uh, we had a, a women in leadership panel where it was so crowded that we had an overflow room. We broke the fire code. And so <laughs> there was a lot of interest in that. And uh, it was just a great time to connect. And then towards the end, you know, students were able to attend a football game, you know. And so for some of our students who've never attended a football game, it's just a great, great, you know, great way just to, you know, see something new. Uh, and again, this is a, a way that you can connect with others uh, while you're in the program. Um, Jesse's Sesto on Workplace, which is our online platform. And these are just a couple of, of you know, quotes from, you know, our, our students while they're in the program. And, you know, you can study on a remote island vacation or what have you. So the 100% online flexibility uh, definitely is there. And that's a great way, like Jesse mentioned, just to kind of get connected um, as well. Um, and then the student meetups. Um, Jesse, did you say you attended a couple of student meetups? Not yet. I missed okay. the one with uh, the dean came in to New York. Mm -hmm. but look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, and, these, and and a lot of times, you know, it's like, geese, we may put on a student meetup, like myself and Narissa uh, put together a student meetup in, in D.C. Uh, a couple of months back, and it was great. We had like 25 learners from the DC area. And it was so awesome to see them connect in person. And a lot of times what happens after we do like a geese led meetup, the students will continue <laughs> like to do their meetups in their cities. And again, it doesn't matter where you're located, right? We have students all over. Um, and then we have faculty that will have faculty led meetups. They may be traveling to a certain city or a conference, uh, whether it's internationally or you know in the US. And they're willing to to host a meetup, um, you know, with students in, in those locations. And so, um, so I think not only students who want to engage and get connected, um, but also faculty as well. Um, so I talked a little bit about the curriculum, talked about Geese College of Business, uh, ways to con get connected in the classroom, ways to get connected outside the classroom. Um, but we also want to make sure that you have the support um, system in place for you um, academically. They want you to be, we want you to be successful in the program. And so we do have a student academic success team um, that is strictly for our online students. And so these are our, our, you know, professional advisors that will help you with degree requirements, policy, degree planning. You know, if you need to take a break from the program, they're your go-to people to kind of help you figure out like next steps. Um, and so they do have um, open office hours. If you have like a quick question, 15, 10, 15 minute question, uh, there are opportunity for one-on-one -on -one appointments as well. So if you have more of a, a longer a question that requires a little bit deeper conversation, um, those those are available. And of course there's email support or what have you. So, um, so we do wanna make sure that you have that student academic success, someone that's there outside of faculty um, that can support your success um, in the program as well. Uh, Jesse, have you taken advantage of any of the uh, student success? Yes, course? I did. I actually okay. visited the advisor for two or three times um, throughout the course, and he was very, very supportive. Um, he explained me what the course will look like. For example, I was looking for the elective course, um, and he was able to tell me what I will learn from the from the class and refer me to the link of the Coursera so that I can go there and take a peek of the content, uh, get some feeling about you know, you know the stuff in the course, what it suit me. Um, and I know some classmates, they may take two classes per semester. So they also check with the advisor to see the timetable and then see if it is doable to pair those two classes together in one semester. Because once you're in the IMSA, you will know that, okay, maybe some class is a little bit challenging. You don't want to pair it with the classes you want to do it alone so um you can always visit the the advisor and ask for his opinion and um also he gave me some great tips when i enroll some class for example i enrolled the one called uh, Eki 398 for this semester and he told me there has a dual 
um, that the skis has to do with uh, Becca so that as a student, I can get a um, discount from the Becca CPA uh, review material, stuff like that. Really good um, opportunity to check with the uh, advisor. Yes, our, our advisors are, they, they really try to stay relevant, um, yeah. you know, with the, the, infant, the degree requirements of planning and so forth. Um, so, yeah, so that's a really great point, especially, you know, you want to make sure you're, you're, you're not pairing <laughs> to quantitative classes or what have yeah. you. And, and so that's and, that, and that's good that you can have someone you can kind of lean on uh, to kind of talk it through, you know, based on your experience, your, you know, your interests or what have you. Um, so so it's great, great that you was able to take advantage of the student success team. And so what part of the application looks time consuming or most difficult for you? If you want to answer this question, I think this is the second to last question. So if you want to join by the web or you can go to the QR code and yeah, just let us know. Is there a particular part of the application if you started or even if you haven't started that you just already just thinking about like, oh my gosh, I'm really concerned about, you know, a certain part of the application. Um, typically, we will get the personal statement, okay, the resume, unofficial transcripts, work experience, prereq, so all those, okay, English proficiency and recommendation. Yeah, resume is a big one um, as well, and rightfully so, because I know we, you know, we, we tend to have seasoned professionals who have, <laughs> like, Jesse, 18 years work experience, right? What do I need to put on this on this resume or what have you? Um, and so what we try to say is, you know, on your application, um, we, you know, we typically like to see the progression of work experience. So if you have, you know, an extensive work experience, you don't necessarily have to have four or five, six, seven bullet points for each one. You know, you may just have one bullet point. But, um, but as we, you know, see the progression, um, you know, I think that's that's definitely helpful. We really wanted to see what you listed on your application as your professional work experience. You want to kind of see see that match your resume. Um, and so, you know, the most obviously the most current position is going to be a little bit more relevant than maybe a position you had like ten or fifteen years ago. And so, you don't you don't have to have you know a ten page resume or a CV or what have you. You know, you know, one or two pages, one or two page resume um, is suffice. Like I said, as long as it's matching what you put on your application in terms of your work experience, uh, I think that'll be suffice. Um, a big piece is your academic history. And so we want to make sure that you include all your transcripts um, or mark sheets. And so if it's from a, you know, institution um, across, across seas, you know, sometimes the mark sheets may be in that native language, we want to make sure those are in, in English. And so our our, trans, our um, reviewers are able um, to review those mark sheets. Uh, I know with this program, there's prerequisite coursework, um, which is required. And so I listed on the, the slide deck. And so manage, business management course is required and one or two course sequence and principles of accounting or financial accounting. Um, and so, you know, there is a prereq form so when you fill out the application, there's a form where you where you are required to list the coursework, and then our uh, evaluators will review to make sure that coursework, you know, matches obviously your transcript. And if so, then that's one part of the application um, that will be fulfilled. And uh, I don't have the list of courses on hand, but I know if you don't meet the pre coursework, um, there is a link on our website that will show what courses that you could take. Um, to fulfill, you know, those requirements. Um, there's an academic statement plus a short answer, personal statement. This is through our graduate college um, that with for this year. And basically, you know, it's kind of a way of, of selling yourself in writing, you know, and, um, you know, talking about, you know, maybe what you can bring to the program or what have you, how your professional work experience may have prepared you. Uh, for the program or what have you. And we're like, what are your short-term goals, long-term goals, things of that nature with the academic statement. And again, this is a holistic approach to admission. So all these factors we're going to take in consideration for admission. There's two recommendation recommendation forms. 
And so these forms we will send out to you. You will list your recommenders and that's all you would do. List your name, email, and we will send the form to your recommenders. They will fill out the form and submit it and that's it. Now, they do have the option to write a letter of recommendation in addition to the form, um, which is totally fine. Um, and so, you know, I think it's, it wouldn't hurt if they wrote the letter, wrote the letter recommendation. Now for international applicants only, um, there are testing requirements for admission. And so um, there's information on the website, because a lot of information um, that kind of talks about the scores that you need to meet from the grad college um, for admission. However, there are some exceptions. Um, so there's a waiver essay. Um, maybe you've worked in the US for so many years or you know, come from a country that will um, that meets an exemption um, or you attended a college within so many years um, in the US. And so those are some of the ways you can waive you know, the, the exam uh, for international applicants. Uh, the good thing is no GRE or GMAT required. Um, so we found that students are still successful in a program without that. Now, if you feel like if you've taken a GRE or GMAT and you feel like you scored well, you can certainly submit that score. We will definitely factor that in um, in regards to review your application. Uh, there's a scholarship essay that talks about, you know, overcoming um, adversity, um, you know, what can you contribute to the program, things of that nature. And I'll talk about a deadline with that. And we we give out just, you know, very small number of, of these scholarships um, through Coursera. It's a partner, partnership with Coursera that will cover 70% of the program cost. Uh, it's very, very competitive scholarship, as you can imagine. Um, but there's a scholarship essay that is required. And that is at the time of application. So remember, you have to submit that um, a scholarship essay while you're submitting your, your application. Um, quickly, I just want to touch on performance-based admission track. And so for students that, you know, may not meet the admission requirements, um, there are some courses that we will require you to take. Um, and so you could, so this is just another pathway into the program. And so if students didn't meet full admission requirements, there's a performance-based admission track. You take two classes, you know, you earn a B or a higher 3.0 GPA, then you're automatically into the IMSA um, program. And those classes will count towards your degree as well. So you're not losing any time. Some students wanted to start that way, which is totally fine. Um, they may not just feel confident that they want to go straight to the program. So they start off with the some core courses and, and go that route. Um, so there is a pathway if you're not admitted directly into the program. So I'm just going to pause. Um, that was a lot of kind of cover within the application um, process. Once you um, apply, we will have a team of counselors that will review your application to make sure all the material is there. Once everything is in, then you will, will um, be reviewed. For our IMSA students, there is a, uh, we now have a video submission. So you don't actually have to interview with myself or any of our other staff members, it's a video submission. Uh, it's like a two minute, you have two minutes to answer questions and you submit that video. Jesse, when you went through the process, did you have an interview with a staff member? Yes, I did. Okay, how was the interview? It was great. I thought I overprepared. <laughs> yeah. So it was casual. Um, you don't need you don't need to be, you know, stressed about the interview. I treat it as a job interview. So I was like really over prepared, but you don't have to. Mainly it's a conversation about, you know, like Mark had said, what you expected in the program, uh, how you um like allocate your time to the study, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I touched on the review process. Um, like I said, typically evaluation period is like two to three weeks after application is complete. Um, and so, yeah, so we do a holistic approach. Yeah. And so we try not to, to keep your admission, holding your admission for months or what have you. We, we want to make sure you, you get a, a response in an adequate time. And so uh, so we really try hard to, to get these these going. Um, here's some deadlines. So for our summer 2024 um, 
program it starts the coursework starts um, June twelfth and in August fourth, and so um, there's no application fee. All applications will receive full consideration, and this is the deadline to to start actually start courses in June as opposed to May that I have on the screen. So I apologize for that. So that's summer twenty twenty four, and then fall application deadlines uh, here. So May second for the maximum benefit. And so that's the one thing to, to take in consideration. The final application deadline to start in August is not until June 27th. However, if you wait until that time, a lot of these benefits will fall off. Like, um, for example, eligibility for scholarship consideration. You know, you will only be eligible for scholarship consideration if you apply by May 2nd. So keep that in mind. And all this information is on our website, but I just wanted to share. Um, and again, quality, Illinois quality, the flexibility, the affordability, um, our core structure, networking. Uh, we try not to keep you out there on the island, right? And so I think that's one of the big, big pieces of our program. And so if you do have questions, um, feel free to email us. Uh, there's a QR code. There's our phone number. I'm going to stop sharing. And was there anything that we missed, um, Lori? I know we have just like maybe a one or two minutes left. Yeah. Um, some folks asked the, if you all could put your LinkedIn or your email in the chat, if they could reach out with some questions. And then we had one question about the big four accounting forms and if they come onto campus um, to give their company presentations and if IMSA students are allowed to attend those in person. Yeah, so our, our big four, yeah, we have a great relationship with our big four accounting firms. They're always on our campus. Um, talking to our, our students. And so you can come and, and listen. There may be some that are restricted to maybe undergrad students. Um, and there may be opportunity where it's open um, to all GE students. And so I think it just varies, um, you know, based on what, what they're they're speaking about. Um, but yeah, our, our online students typically don't come to campus, but they're more than welcome to come to campus. We have had students get their, you know, student ID on campus as well. Um, but yeah, have you heard anything, Jesse, from, from your end? Yeah, I got the library card. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm so proud of it to show that out. Oh, I'm a student. <laughs> Get some <And> discount. <laughs> and there's my email address, um, that I put in the chat. So if you do have questions, um, feel free to reach out to me as well. Was there anything else that I may have missed out on, Lori? One question about Pat and I'm gonna pop it and I'm gonna answer that for them. Um, so I think we are good here in just a minute. Okay. And I'm gonna just add my LinkedIn as well. Awesome. Well, thank you all for um, attending. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the questions. And um, feel free again to reach out if you do have questions. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Lori, as well. And everyone, take care. And uh, hopefully we hear from you soon.